she's sort of the underwriting. She's your underwriter. Underwriting okay. person. Okay. Scal, if you can go ahead and swear her out. Would you raise your right hand, please, ma'am? You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you out. I do. Could you state your name? Linton Chaka. Okay. And how do you spell your last name? C H E C K A. Okay. And you pronounce it how? Chaka. Chaka. Okay. Ms. Chaka, my name is Ben Taylor. I represent the plaintiff in this case. And it's my understanding that you are going to be designated on behalf of Midwest National Life Insurance Company of Tennessee to testify here today? Yes. Okay. And if I could, I want to hand you that. You want it marked as an exhibit or are you just showing it to her? I want to show it to her and then I'm going to mark it. Okay. Have you ever seen that document before? I don't believe so. No. Can I ask you to speak up? Just I don't believe I've seen that, no. Okay. And I'll just represent to you, that's the notice to take the deposition of the company that we filed and we issued today. And I'm going to go through those areas of inquiry with you and see which ones of them you're here to testify about or you can actually go through them if you want to and tell me which ones you're here to talk about. And, and while she's reading it, let me make the, let me just go ahead and put on the record that our, our position about this notice is that we're here voluntarily um, uh, producing somebody or two witnesses to talk about the underwriting process uh, generally and as it was applied in this case and the claims handling of this case um, but uh, that this notice was never uh, served on us um, and so insofar as the notice itself. We're here voluntarily using the notice as a guide um, and we're certainly designating Ms. Checo on the underwriting issues, um, but we reserve all objections to the notice uh, based on the fact that we were never properly served with it. Okay. And just for the record, I mean, I had no idea you were going to take the position that you weren't properly served with this notice. And I mean, I hope we're not wasting our time here today. No, I. I your witness's time. I, if you would have told me there was an issue, uh, I mean, I'm assuming you got a copy of this notice. Otherwise, you wouldn't have people here from out of town to I, give testimony today. Yes, I got a copy from uh, the co defendant um, and called you back in December and told you I didn't get a copy and that we needed to reschedule. And. Um, the, no issue, no notice was ever issued for today specifically, and so we were never served with this notice. We're certainly not, I, I don't intend to waste our time today. Um, as I said, she, we're here voluntarily to give testimony. As I told you on the phone yesterday, I tried to call you yesterday and, and, and give you my position about what she was going to, what these witnesses were going to be able to testify to and what they weren't, and I told you we'd have somebody to talk about the underwriting process in this case and the claims process in this case um, but that and so essentially that I told you specifically that essentially the first page of your subject matters I think we'd absolutely cover but that the rest that I had various objections to um, and um, you know offered to discuss that with you and you know we didn't have much of a discussion so, no, I don't think we're here to waste our time. We're here to provide you, like I told you yesterday, with everything I think you need to know about what happened in this case um, and the policies that were applied in this case. But as I told you specifically yesterday, you know, we're, we're not here to provide you with, for example, testimony about all prior incidents similar to the incident in question, um, all non-privileged information regarding other life insurance claims denied by you, uh, and so forth on the second page. That's what I tried to explain to you yesterday. 
Well, just for the record, so we're clear, then let's go through numerically on each one of them, and you just let, go ahead and tell me now which ones y'all are not prepared to testify about. We'll get that out of the way, then we'll go over the ones that we can, and we'll just work through this the best way we can. Well, I believe that uh, Ms. Cheka will be able to address, as I told you, uh, the underwriting process generally and in, as applied in this case, and so I think that would cover uh, one, two, uh, three, um, and perhaps to some extent seven. Uh, the other witness will, I think, cover four, five, and six, which I think cover claims. Um, and then some of the rest of them are sort of uh, sort of broad catch-alls that will that I think will catch some of that. Um, eight and nine, you know, to the extent they cover one through seven, will be covered by these witnesses. I think it's sort of a catch-all. Um, the you know same thing with all of them. To the extent they cover. The issues of, of, of one through seven, I think, will we'll absolutely be able to give you uh, testimony about them. Um, obviously, as I said yesterday, I had, I had some legal objections to, to a lot of the rest of them um, that we would assert if, if necessary, as I told you yesterday. Now, I'm, I'm just going to note for the record, you didn't tell me you were going to have any objections to this yesterday. You called and amorphously asked me, you know, well, let's go over some of these areas of inquiry so I can make sure that I've got everybody uh, for you, t you know, tomorrow. Well, I, and I, I, can, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir. Go ahead. Let's just do this because we're wasting a lot of paper in this deposition, sitting here just in dialogue. Let me just start going through this, try and get through this thing the best way we can. Uh, it's Miss Checo, right? Okay. <clears throat> Have you had a chance to look through while we sat here and, and talked? Okay. Uh, this The first one, the process by which life insurance applications are prepared and or submitted and or evaluated and or approved by proposed insurance and, uh, and or you. I guess, can you, are you the best person to testify on behalf of the company in regards to that area? Uh, yes, at this point, yes. Okay. Let me go back and I, I guess, uh, tell me where you're from. Where do you live? I live in Arlington, Texas. Okay. How long have you lived in Arlington? Uh, since 1978. Okay. And where are you currently employed? At uh, Mega Health and Life Insurance Company, Health Markets. Okay. And what is Mega? Uh, it's one of our companies. The, that's the, the name that's on my check, actually. It's um, the larger company is Health Markets, but the name of my check is actually Mega Health and Life. Okay. And then where does Midwest National Life? It is another one of the companies. Okay. But you don't actually work for Midwest National Life? I, I did at this time. Okay. So at the time of this, I guess, denial at, or? At, at the, the time, time of uh, his application, I was the manager of underwriting for Midwest National Life. Okay. In the uh, Texas office. Okay. And I guess was Midwest bought out or? Uh, we were bought by Blackstone. Um, we changed the name to Health Markets, I believe, in 2006. Um, but Midwest is, is still one of the insurance companies that we have. Okay. And so you said you, your testimony is at the time that the, the Nichols application was submitted to Midwest, you were a manager there? I was a manager of underwriting okay. in the Texas office. Okay. Uh, and tell me, what, what is underwriting? It's uh, the evaluation um, of the application and the information for uh, risk to the company and determination as to whether or not that uh, applicant receives insurance. Okay. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, for 27 years. Okay. And I know we had requested the policies and procedures of Midwest in, in underwriting. Mm -hmm. Do you have that documentation with you? I do not. Uh, this was the Oklahoma City Life Division. I don't have policies and procedures for that. Okay. And are you saying that there that none exist or that you just don't I have do them? I do not know. I do not know. Okay. So your testimony is at the time this 
I guess, claim or this policy was submitted to Midwest and you were working there as a manager, you didn't have any policies or procedures? The policies and procedures of Oklahoma City Life would have been kept in Oklahoma City. Okay. I, di I did not work in the Oklahoma City office. Okay. What is Oklahoma City Life? Well, it's, it's not Oklahoma City Life, excuse me. It's Midwest National Life Insurance Company, but it was sold by our, sold and serviced by our Oklahoma City division. Okay. And so are those two different divisions, I guess? They were. Okay. And so they both had different policies and procedures? I do not know what their policies and procedures were. Okay. Well, who does know those policies and procedures? The, the, the company is no longer um, one of our companies. It was sold, I believe, in 2008. Okay. So the, I guess the life insurance company that we're talking about here is sold and it's gone and it no longer exists. Is that what you're saying? From what I understand, yes. Okay. What was your involvement as a manager then? I mean, you started out this deposition telling me you were the manager over Midwest National Life Insurance Company when this was done. And now you're telling me that the insurance company is gone. In the Texas office. We serviced um, health and life insurance policies. We did not sell this life insurance policy. That was handled by the Oklahoma City Division. Okay. And when was that division sold or? I believe it was 2008. Okay. And it was sold to who? I have no idea. Do you know of anybody that would know? I do not. Okay. Council, do you have any idea? Uh, I'll, um, Sitting here right now, no. But can I find out? Sure. Okay. And that's one of the things I told you yesterday. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to see the application? I did. In this case? I did. And have you seen the claims file? I did. Okay. And I guess, can you explain to me why this claim was denied? Uh, from what I saw, based on Mr. Nichols' uh, driving record. Uh, this claim was, uh, or the, the file was, the application was rescinded, the policy was rescinded. Okay. And is, is that the only reason? That is what I could tell from the claims file. Okay. And And I guess it was your understanding that there were some moving violations that either weren't reported? It appeared that the application, uh, some of the questions, or at least one of the questions, could have been answered differently. Okay. And what, why is that important from an underwriting standpoint? Uh, the, the question would have uh, given us reason to investigate further. And investigating further, we would have determined that perhaps Mr. Nichols um, would not have received this at this uh, life insurance policy or not in the form that he received it. Okay. So what you're saying is, is that if, if this information would have been reported on his application, then you wouldn't have immediately not written the policy. You just would have investigated further? We would have investigated further, correct. Okay. And then what's the basis at that point in your investigation as to whether or not you're going to write the top or issue the policy? If we had the information that uh, was obtained when the claim was filed, um, in my estimation, we would not have issued the policy. Okay, and why is that? Uh, based on uh, the, the moving violations or the driving violations and the point system that was used. Okay, well tell me about the point system. Uh, for each violation, um, there is a point value assigned based on um, the number of years um, ago that the, uh, the moving violation happened, um, and then those are all added up, and the total uh, is assessed either a, an increased rate or um, a decline. Okay.
tell me if you would, I guess, the process for uh, either issuing these policies or not issuing these policies. You have agents that work for you, right? Correct. Okay. And are they actual employees of the company or? I don't remember at that time if they were employees of the company or not. Okay. I believe they were self-employed and they sold insurance for us captive agents. Okay. And you use the term captive agents. What does that mean? They only sold for our company. Okay. But they were independent contractors and received 1099s? I do not know. Okay. But you have agents that go out and they solicit these applications for insurance. Correct. Okay. And then they submit it to the home office, which I guess your testimony is it was in Oklahoma? Correct. And then your office or the underwriting office looks at the applications and then decides whether or not to issue the policy, right? That's correct. Okay. And it's your understanding that there was a policy issued in this case? There was. Okay. Do you have the original application? I, I've seen a copy of it. I don't have the original. Uh, do you know who Pamela Smith is? I do not. Let me hand you this document here. Could you read that letter for me? I'm going to ask you a few questions about it. To Mr. Taylor, we're writing to confirm receipt of your letter dated July 13th, 2006, regarding your rescission of the above policy and your representation of the owner and beneficiary of the policy, the original death certificate for Antonio Nichols, along with a copy of the original policy, was returned to Ms. Delania Nichols on July 10th, 2006. The original policy contract could not be returned since the policy has been canceled and is no longer valid enclosed are the documents upon which our decision was based. I have also included a copy of the letter sent to Ms. Delania Nichols explaining the decision to rescind the policy, as well as a copy of the application for insurance. This letter outlines the material representations made on the application. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me directly at the number listed below. Can you tell me why the original policy was not returned? Chad Grady. Okay. Bye. All right. Sorry about that. You don't know why they kept the original policy? It says that uh, if the policy had been canceled and is lo no longer valid. Other than that, I, I don't know why it wasn't returned. Okay. And you haven't seen the original policy? I have not. Okay. Can I have that back, please? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and mark that notice as the first exhibit. <clears throat> and then, Chad, I'm going to mark as the next exhibit that cover letter that I just showed her along with the enclosed documents that I received. Okay. There you go. And let, let's go off the record for a second. 